Hello, welcome to Spirit of Life. My name is Geraldine Lee, your host, and our guest is Dr. Anne-Marie Diggins and Martin Van Leeuw. They're from the Focal Library Movement, and they'll be talking about the upcoming symposium which they are organizing. Welcome, Dr. Anne-Marie and Martin. Thank, Thank you. you. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, I'd like to know um, more about you, um, what your interest in the Health Symposium and your work Okay, I work as a GP mm -hmm. and um, what I love about that is you get to know people and you see them you know, from babies through to elderly and, uh, and dying and the Health Symposium uh, is a gift that we hope to be able to give in terms of the end of life um, issues, debate, questions, care. We want to offer that. Oh, great. Yeah. And you, Martin. I'm, I work in a, as a spiritual or pastoral care in a uh, secular large uh, teaching hospital and uh, I believe that uh, we, we really need to teach people more about dying and the spirituality aspects of and the end of life uh, situation, so hence the, the symposium. Oh, it's a fantastic, it's very mm. relevant today, especially yes. in Victoria. Yes. Um, would, would you be able to talk a bit about the purpose of the symposium? The purpose, well, I hope to make a contribution in this area. Um, we will have speakers speaking from a spiritual aspect, uh, one covering palliative care, uh, the psychological process someone goes through facing a terminal illness, um, pastoral care aspects, and also the use of language and uh, different cultural aspects mm. that are involved. Yeah. And, and who's organising this uh, symposium? Well, it's being organised by the New Humanity Branch. Um, I'll repeat that, the New Humanity Branch of the Foklari Movement in the zone of Oceania. So, uh, and Chiara Lubick was the co-founder of the Foklari Movement she started the uh, New Humanity branch in 1954 through circumstances when the movement was quickly growing and that brought some personal experience of intense physical exhaustion and affliction. So the New Humanity branch of health in the Focolari movement involves everything connected with our life, such as food, health, rest, environment, recreational and sporting activities. But it also concerns the whole spectrum of human life, so that includes birth, illness, suffering and death. So New Humanity includes people of all faiths, non-believers, social and racial cultural backgrounds. Mm. They try to encourage reciprocity in work, projects, discussions and ideas with others through God's love, which brings unity. Oh, that's great. So this way of offering their ideas or their activities renews relationships, uh, environments and structures, even influencing politicians and legislators. Mm. So for example, in researching the healing relationship between healthcare providers and patients, one doctor in the study indicated that the quality of the relationships created with patients was as important as the pills dispensed. Mm. So. Mm. Each of, yeah. each of us can expect to experience illness and suffering uh -huh. and eventually death as part of our human conditions. So, <clears throat> excuse me, these human conditions provide many challenges for us as individuals, mm -hmm. families and as communities, but are also opportunities for personal growth as well as for caring and mutual love to flourish. Experience indicates that through these life challenges, it's important to nurture loving, healing relationships and be communitarian rather than stay independent and alone. Mm. And, and you were involved in a health symposium before and you got a lot out of it. So um, have you personally as a GP like had an experience of end of life or what's making you passionate about this health mm. symposium? Yeah, I've 
um, treated people and I'm currently treating someone mm. with uh, cancer and I'm very much aware we need to work as a team, to mm -hmm. have a team of people around, not just GPs, doctors, mm -hmm. nurses. Um, and so I often involve palliative care, um, visit people regularly, um, attend to well pain needs, other needs, um, mm -hmm. but also there's the emotional aspects, psychological aspects, often highlights if there are any major issues in the families, they become heightened. Mm. So it's a, it's a very strong experience and very particular. Mm. Yes. And you yourself, um, Martin, you, you've had like, because of your experience at hospital, this, that this has got you interested in this symposium organising it? Y yes, and it's a very important uh, aspect of uh, healthcare and uh, there's a, a large amount of work to be done in teaching people more about end of life and uh, so hence this symposium, that's the, the, yeah. the reason we organised it. Mm. And you two are involved in the Focalare movement? Yes. yes. So it's very much um, Chiara who's the founder of Focalare mm. movement who, who was on her heart to build unity. Mm. Yes. So, and uh, she, Focolari movement is also known as the uh, work of Mary. So it was founded in 1943 in uh, Trent in northern Italy. It's an ecclesial movement uh, of spiritual and social renewal. Uh, so Chiara Lubic is its founder, as you said. So its members form a global community to represent the most diverse ethnic and cultural groups and come from every social background. So. Um, Focolari spirituality is inspired by the gospel. It generates a way of life that responds to widespread questions on the meaning of life and on authenticity. Reciprocal love has revealed a paradigm of unity, a code, if you like, for spiritual and social renewal. Wow, fantastic. Mm. On that note, we'll go mm. for a break and it'll be interesting to hear more about that. Yes. You've been watching Spirit of Life. Stay with us and we'll be back after the break. Hello, welcome back to Spirit of Life. My name is Geraldine Lee, your host, and our guests is Dr. Anne-Marie Diggins and Martin Van Lief. They're from the Focolare movement, and they're talking about the upcoming symposium, health symposium, that they are organizing. Welcome back. Thank, Thank you. you. So uh, this health symposium is about the end of life debate, isn't it? Yes. So how does that connect with the spirituality of the Focolare movement? Well, uh, we have what's known the golden rule in our society. Major, all major religions have this golden rule. It's to treat others as you'd like to be treated. So this comes in with this uh, topic on end-of-life care. Um, so it's treating others as uh, you'd like to be treated yourself. Will there be doctors that are talking at the symposium? Uh, we have a palliative care physician, Dr Natasha Michael, She's unable to be there in person, but uh, she's kindly given permission for her uh, giving a lecture, just a short 20-minute talk, mm -hmm. um, talking about palliative care. And so we'd like to combine the, um, the golden rule with how you care for people. It's uh, in being professional, mm -hmm. adding that extra layer of truly sort of loving the patients in depth. Mm. Yeah. And there is the cube of love or there's some cube that you'll use in, would you like to explain that? Yes, uh, the, the cube of love was uh, started for, uh, for children some time ago and we've now adapted this for the, a cube of love in the healthcare area. So it's, uh, um, it's, it's got six sides and the, t the headings on each side are take initiative in caring, 
care for everyone, treat everyone with dignity, reach out to those most in need, build relationships and ease each other's pain. And one of our colleagues, for example, uses the cube when they're talking with other staff mm -hmm. and they throw the dice and whichever mm -hmm. side comes up is uh, what they'll try and live for that next uh, day that they're working together. Yeah, that's yeah. fantastic. And mm. it's a great way of connecting people because that's yes. very much, um, from what I understand, yes. Kiara's um, to build unity among health professionals, even of different faiths. Is that yes. correct? But not just within the health profession, but um, even building their, those relationships uh, with patients, with families, with carers, with friends, with, um, you know, there's no limit with everyone, basically. Mm. Yeah. Uh, if you all know of any story where you, where you have found that this really has worked, uh, can you name any things, any stories that, yes. that true stories of things where it's worked? Yes. So one of the sides is each ease others pain so and that means being one with another it means feeling in ourselves what our neighbors feel so there were two couples had a very deep experience of this one was christian and the other muslim and they often share their problems and hopes so when Ben became seriously ill, Titania and Paolo spent a lot of time in the hospital with his wife, Basma, and their two children, right to the end. Then even though she was distraught at the loss of her husband, Basma and her Christian friends prayed for one another, ser seriously ill person. She knelt and on her prayer, Matt facing in the direction of Macca. Basma confided to Tatiana and Paolo that what makes me happier than anything else is feeling part of a body in which everyone has the good of the others at heart. Mm, so that's a great unity and yes. respect for each yes. other's spirituality. Yeah. It's wonderful. Yes. And um, you were also talking about the um, end of life in a sense of um, how not only the doctors, how the doctors feel, but how the patients feel. And are some of those issues brought up during this symposium? Well, another one of our speakers is a psychologist mm. who uh, will be talking about um, what a person faces psychologically when they, are, when they have a terminal illness. So mm. the issues that come up that family members looking on may not be aware of. Um, so this can help people to understand what someone's going on more fully, uh, the changes as, um, as they're in quite a different place from where their family members are mm. who, who are not facing uh, an imminent death. Mm. Yeah. And you talked about the need for people to say, death rather than passing away. What, was, what would you like to explain more about how it's very important to say death rather than passing away? Oh yes, the, um, to use the word died or dying rather than passing, um, it's like talking to your children when one of their pet animals has, has died. Um, mm. So it's also very important when people are, particularly family members are confused and distraught to use plain language. We're also often dealing with people with different language abilities, so passing is confusing. Oh, we've experienced that the word passing is then confusing. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's to use the word died or dying. On that note, we'll go for a break now. You've been watching Spirit of Life. Stay with us and we'll be back after the break. <laughs> Welcome back to Spirit of Life. My name is Geraldine Lee, your host, and our guest is Dr. Anne-Marie Diggins and Martin Wen Liv. They are from the Vocalare movement, and they're talking about the health 
symposium which is coming up that they are organizing. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. Um, It's been on many people's hearts about this new act on assisted dying, voluntary assisted dying in Victoria. Um, Will that be addressed at the health symposium? Yes, there'll be a speaker uh, talking about that particular subject. And one of the key points in that is to address the situation when a patient comes to you and and makes that wish, um, not to ignore it and to ask the question, um, why is it, um, or I understand you wish to die or use voluntary assisted dying, and then open up that discussion and see what develops out of that. After all, voluntary assisted dying is one of a number of options that the medical team has available or the, the healthcare team has available. Um, there are other, issue, other options such as palliative care, for example. Mm. Mm. And yourself, if, if you have a patient in that situation, uh, how would you deal with that? And well, as Martin said, I would like to discuss it with them. Why are they asking this? What are their underlying reasons? Um, Many people have a um, very strong uh, wish to be in control right at the end. Um, uh, And as we know in life, there are many things that we can't control. Mm. So to address the anxieties, the fears, um, because it's personally not something I would like to be directly involved with. enabling the act. For a doctor to do that, they need to go through training, which is available online. Mm. And there are so many checks and balances in terms of making sure that someone has the full capacity to understand Mm. uh, what they're doing. They need another doctor to also assess that capacity, apply Mm. for it. So, um, yeah, there are many aspects to Mm. it. Yes, I... I've been touched personally because my dad was dying at home. I mean, and um, and you know, the palliative team were fantastic. They, mm. you know, helped him to ease the pain. But I think fear was something that was on his heart that sometimes increased the pain. But whenever our family reassured him and spent time with him, prayed with him, it was powerful. And my, I myself suffer chronic pain. And, and I find when you have prayers and faith, it really does help you deal with pain, Mm -hmm. um, besides medication, (laughs) which is powerful too. Mm -hmm. And what other um, lecturers will be that be, or people will speak? Would you like to tell us about the keynote speakers? So this Father Brendan, who will speak more about the spirituality Mm -hmm. of the Focolari movement, which is a Christian spirituality, but uh, focus on love, which you can apply everywhere. Our second speaker will be a filmed uh, talk on palliative care. Mm. Our third speaker will speak about the psychological aspects that someone you know, journeys through as they are living with a terminal illness. Mm. Um, we have a speaker talking about language and also about uh, some different cultural differences, ethnic differences, and finally a speaker in the field of pastoral care so that you're not looking just at the the medical side of things you're looking at the whole person mm. yeah will there be time for questions so i suppose people um you know i suppose people of uh, faith will be wondering what's the right thing you know when we yes. medication and all those sort of things that come up we also have uh people speaking, uh, giving their experiences. So there would be um, uh, relatives or p- uh, one person is a patient who went through but not not uh, to the end of life, obviously, because mm-hmm. <laughs> he'll be there. But uh, We'll finish mm-hmm. with a question an- and yes. answer, so yes. oh, it's wow. an opportunity mm-hmm. for people mm-hmm. to an- ask questions. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. It, yeah, there's um, in our culture today there's such a fear of pain isn't it and I suppose I mean I'm scared of pain too but yes. um, obviously the, the 
um, part of our Catholic faith or the Focal Ayurveda movement, would they have any teachings about suffering or you know enduring pain? What's the teachings within mm -hmm. the Focal Ayurveda movement? One a key aspect is Jesus dying on the cross mm. and his phrase, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Mm. In a way can sum up all our physical, mm. spiritual, emotional, every suffering can be su offered up in that cry. And we have a way of, um, of being able to join our sufferings with that of Jesus on the cross. Mm. Mm. And then going further, Jesus then continued, into your hands I commend my spirit. Mm. So he trusted in God. Mm -hmm. um, and our, after adjoining our sufferings with that of Jesus, we take the step to go out to love our neighbours. And mm. often the suffering is diminished or mm. can even disappear altogether. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's a powerful thing because I yes. know myself when I've had pain and I thought I can't bear this. And when I've offered it to Jesus, I've uh, I felt actually relief and I thought, wow, it's actually a way, abandoning it to God yes. seems to help. Mm. Yes. yes, that's powerful. And when will this symposium be, this health symposium? It's on the Sunday the 24th of uh, November and it'll be held at uh, ACU, the Australian Catholic University in Fitzroy, starting at 1 p.m. Um, mm. Yeah, one of the lecture theatres there, the Mercy mm. Lecture Theatre yeah. in Young Street. So oh, right. we should have signs so oh, that... Right. Yes. And what uh, time does it go till? Finishes at five, uh -huh. yeah. And if people want to go, how, well, do they just turn up or what happens? They can, yes. yeah. And also they can ring you, I think, with yes. for more um, information. Yeah, so I, my mobile number, 0438 381 891. People can ring for, oh, okay. um, ask me any questions, okay. clarification. Could you repeat that mobile number again? Okay, 038 381 891. Yeah, no, that, that sounds like a great number of speakers and it's a very reasonable p price too, only $20 or $10. Mm -hmm. Thank you yes. so much for, and all the best for the um, symposium and God bless you. Thank okay, you. thank you, Geraldine. You've been watching Spirit of Life. Tune in next week. Goodbye and God bless you. <laughs>